Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another forecast here for fall and winter week. This is the third day in August, which means it's the third day in fall and winter week here. Our annually fall and winter week where we do the first week of uh, August, all is winter and fall videos. Obviously, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about the tropics as well. I will have another video on tropics from soon to be Hurricane Isaias. It could be a hurricane by the five o'clock update as it's developing now an eye fully closed eye wall. But that'll be I'll talking about later this evening. And when it makes, I'll actually possibly make a time lapse of this making a landfall. So be sure to uh, stay tuned for that. But we're gonna be seeing who could see the snowiest fall. Yesterday we did who could see the coldest fall, and then on Monday we said who could see the um. I'm sorry, not Monday. On Saturday we said. Uh, uh, it was our fall forecast, but this is gonna be who will see the snowiest fall. And as we get into tomorrow, it will be our our second winter forecast. So that's gonna be extremely, extremely exciting there for our uh, winter forecast number two tomorrow. Hopefully, if not, I'll probably uh, do my winter forecast all the way at the end of the week there. But today's video, you can see who the snowy who will see the snowiest fall based on the average. So we won't be seeing who you can see the snowiest uh, fall in the U.S. It's just based on your average here. And again, this is not going to be 100% accurate, so do not take this for 100% accurate. Uh, it will be, probably be a lot more accurate if I do a couple more of these before fall, before September 3rd or September 20th, 20th, I believe so. Um, but do not take this hundred percent accuracy because I might I may be off, I may not be off. But without further ado though, let's see who can see the snowiest fall. So here's our map here, and as you see, we have blue and oranges. Let's go and start out with the above average. Who's gonna be seeing the uh, above average snowfall here? So as you see in this light blue, this is gonna be seeing a slightly snowier, a, a slightly snowier wind uh, sorry, not winter fall. That's going to be ranging as far as portions of Idaho there in the Rockies, all the way up into the ears near uh, Lake Erie, up to uh, Lake uh, Huron, I believe so, up there as far as the Adirondacks in upstate New York. So really, really monitoring a huge change here this fall. I'm seeing a very snowy northern United States in general, as we're going to be seeing many, many polar vortexes, the Arctic blast, and all of that we're going to be seeing above average precipitation for the Pacific Northwest and Ohio Valley due to that potential incoming La Nina pattern. So that can really uh, increase the possibility for many snowstorms for a portion and in general in the Great Lakes in the, in the Midwest and the Rockies. Let's start off with the Rockies here, the slightly above average snowfall or uh, a, a slightly wintier, a wind, uh, snowier fall. As you see, we have uh, the, uh, Idaho area, Wyoming, Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, all the way up to the uh, Adirondacks. So you guys are going to be seeing uh, slightly snowier, which means you're going to be seeing above average, uh, but not s extremely above average. Like it won't be kind of, I, I guess I could say it won't be noticeable, I guess you could say that. Uh, so let's say Wisconsin, the, for example. Let's say Southern Wisconsin that's in the light blue, that is in a slightly, uh, slightly snowier fall. Let's say they get um, a foot of snow before December 21st. I know it's not super accurate. It's just an example. All right, let's say they get 15 inches of snow before uh, the first day of winter. Maybe with slightly above average, you guys can maybe get 20 inches of snow, maybe 25. So that's what I mean. That's based on the average. We're going to be seeing a lot of lake effect snow as well. Uh, uh, not as much for Lake Erie and Lake Huron. And probably not as much for Southern Michigan, the Southern Lake Michigan. But really, we're going to be seeing a ton of lake effect snow, though, on uh, just in general this fall and winter because it's huge incoming cold front and above average moisture. It's just perfect conditions to have lake effect and Midwestern snowstorms. And that may bring in a very, very wintry mess there, a very wintry mess for the Northeast, a wintry mess for the Ohio Valley. So it can be a very icy fall, late fall for those areas if this does play out and maybe more of a snowier winter because the Northeast could be seeing more of a late fall and more of a late fall so it's gonna kind of like take a little while for that snow to get in there but as you see in the slightly a uh, slightly uh of average snowfall you guys in the light blue now we're gonna be seeing who can see the snowiest fall and this is those areas in the purple color that purple shade the great lakes is one region and the areas of the great lakes or the midwest and the great lakes is another region let's start out with the northwest we are gonna be seeing uh, moderately above average precipitation for much of the northwest, much for the northwest because of the the La Nina pattern. 
Although we will be seeing slightly above average temperatures for those areas in the, in the pink or average temperatures, it doesn't mean we won't be so seeing snowfall because really these temperatures in these areas are so cold. These averages, let's say like the average is the average low for November for Montana is 30 degrees or 20 degrees. So slightly above, slightly to a average is like only like 25. Still extremely cold in these areas. And these are almost the highest elevation in America, I believe. So the Rockies, we're going to be seeing so, uh, these these conditions are so favorable. Uh, even we have even if we have averages slightly above our temperature in these areas, because we're going to be seeing some big incoming cold fronts though, throughout these areas that are kind of to the just a little bit more to the east. And that moisture is going to be more to the west. So that's going to be perfect conditions. The, the coldest to the east and the moisture to the west. So it's got to bring snow or some icy mixes between the middle there. And that's going to bring a lot of early mountain snow. I think we can start seeing our snow as, as late as this month, as maybe the last week of August. We can start seeing our snow there very soon. Our first snow in, in Montana or Idaho. That's where we see our first snow. So that's also including Yellowstone National Park, including areas near Atlanta, including Bozeman, including some some decent towns there in the in the areas of the Rockies. So you guys can be seeing a very snowy fall compared to your average. So that's a bit that's one region there too because perfect not only that it's higher elevations, very cold temperatures no matter if it's above average or average. Not only that, we will be seeing a ton of moisture, so that's perfect. And then that's going to increase the threat for snow for the Midwest, which is why the Midwest is under uh, the, the Central Plains or the uh, Dakotas are under a slightly above our snowfall because of these western storms that can form the Rockies and then go out into the, uh, the Midwest and they move east just like the Halloween storm. Let's check out the other region that is in a purple. That's going to be for the northern Great Lakes and the general the Midwest. Northern Michigan, northern Wisconsin, northern Minnesota, and portions of eastern North Dakota. We're going to be seeing some really big polar vortexes. And those areas in the Midwest where they're under the... Uh, snowiest fall based on their average they're under the uh, coldest fall region as well if you think about that so that's even more exactly why it's so favorable not only that we're we'll seeing slightly above average precip for these areas in the great lakes and not only that we're we'll seeing very cold temperatures so obviously that means perfect conditions for snow so we're gonna be seeing some really not only nice amount of lick effect snow but we can start seeing some snowstorms that that actually where the low pressure becomes defined and it starts bringing snow. We can see some really. This could be the epicenter of snow of, of the eastern snow, the eastern United States snowstorms. They can start right there. The, the, they can start in the Midwest and then make its way towards the Great Lakes and to Lake Erie, Lake Huron, Lake Michigan, and so forth. But this is where we're gonna be seeing not only a ton of lake effect snow, but also some really big snowstorms. I wouldn't really say blizzards, but some really big snowstorms that develop because of these major cold fronts that come in straight for the Great Lakes. And also those those lakes are gonna be really, really cold there. And that's gonna be really interesting there. Oh sorry, now if those lakes are a bit warmer and if these temperatures come in so cold, these temperatures are uh, coming so cold and the, the lakes have uh, are so a bit warmer. That's exactly how cold the lake effect snow starts because of the cold atmosphere and the warmer waters. And then that brings in a ton of lake effect snow. That's the above average snowfall. Let's check out now who can see the least snowiest fall. And that's going to be for areas of the Sierras and portions of the Rockies. The western, UNES, the western United States, just west of the Rockies, including the uh, West of the Rockies, really, including the Sierras, are going to be seeing possibly below average snowfall due to the, uh, it's going to be a lot warmer and a lot drier, including Arizona, uh, Arizona, Utah, Arizona, California, portions of Washington, uh, sorry, sorry, portions of Oregon, you guys are going to be a lot warmer, and not only that, it could be really dry for some of those areas, so not only is it warm, we're not going to have as much moisture to really bring in those, those snowstorms. Last year, we're kind of heading toward an El Nino pattern, which is why we had so many storms develop in the southwest this year, or sorry, last winter, including Ezekiel, the, the Thanksgiving blizzard. But that really won't happen that much. I think if we're to see any big snowstorms before Christmas, they will develop in the in the Rockies and then make their way into the Great Lakes. So that could be maybe bring in less snow for Kansas, less snow for New Mexico, maybe less snow for Texas and Oklahoma. But that is that. Hope you guys did enjoy the video and bye guys.